All right, we're wrapping up day one here at KubeCon. It's been a really exciting day. The biggest thing on people's minds is just getting to see everybody again. That is the biggest thing I've heard. The, the thing that is on top of people's mind is just being able to see people. Julie Gunderson, who we, who we interviewed a little bit earlier, talked about the fact that she just wants to hug people. I thought that was awesome. So the other big thing from a technical perspective is eBPF. That's all I hear about. Everybody's talking about eBPF. Every day, all day, this is all I hear about. The other thing that, that's on top of mind is OTEL. OTEL is open telemetry. People seem to be really interested in that, and we keep hearing a lot about it. So one of the people we interviewed today was Vic Gamov of Kong. Really interesting interview. We talked a lot about how APIs can be, the API gateway can be a bouncer. And I thought this was a really cool clip. Check out this clip. Why we have a bouncer there? Because the, bar, the bartender doesn't have a time to check every ID. So in saying your application doesn't have to check like every ID or implement all possible authentication and authorization logic. So the next person we interviewed today was Matt LeRae, and we talked about you know, APIs and, and how API testing should be part of the process, part of your CI-CD pipeline, if you will. Check out this clip on that. And you know, one of the things that often gets overlooked in cloud native architectures is like, we, we did all this work with Kubernetes and with cloud native to scale up the infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's all horizontally scaled, it's <laughs> wonderful, everything. but what we didn't think through is, yeah, but what about at the application level? Yep. And so this concept of load testing, you know, like it, it's, it's incredibly difficult in the cloud native architecture and people have kind of just thrown it to the side and so then they load test in production. So additionally, we had Dion from CERN and CERN is one of my favorite places. I mean, I've wanted to work at CERN since I was probably, since they invented CERN. So, you know, Dion came on and he's talking about all the things that they're running and this clip talks about that. There's a wide range of uh, applications of machine learning at CERN. Uh, because the, the LHC, the, the Large Hadron Collider, yeah. it's, it's colliding the, the beams of protons, and then these collisions produce a lot of data. And we're talking about 40 million collisions per second. Wow. And then that translates to around 90 petabytes of data per year by all experiments. So that's a lot. So that itself gives you a lot of potential for application of machine learning in different stages and uh, obtaining, um, obtaining uh, some results in, in different ways. So we can apply machine learning in data acquisition, like while we um, propagate these events from the detectors to the storage system, or mm -hmm. we can apply it in the offline analysis to actually sure. get some physics results. All right, so we had Julie Gunderson and Jason Yi from Gremlin talking about chaos engineering. One of the cool clips that we, were, that we saw there was, was them talking about using Legos with, as, as a model of chaos engineering. Check out this clip right there. So is there a way that we could talk about chaos engineering as Legos? There is, and actually, <laughs> so the, the reason that we both know this is we were uh, actually meeting on a Zoom, yes. and, and you saw my Voltron. Yes, that I have, was awesome. I have, I have Lego Voltron, and, and Lego Voltron is amazing because all of these different lions, if anybody has watched Voltron, they have to come together to form Lego Voltron to be the <laughs> defender of the universe. Because without coming together, the universe is unsafe and it's just a really unfortunate situation. But when we look at it, all of these lions can operate independently. They can all do their own thing. Their, their pilots had to learn how to operate them but they also had to learn how to work together to come together as a group to, to, again, make the universe safe for us all. So what happens when the leg falls off? Yeah. Right, if we cut off the leg, <laughs> <laughs> sorry for that uh, imagery, um, definitely check out Voltron, it is on Netflix. Um, but can we still operate? Can we still defend the universe? And that's how I would like to put it into Lego. All right, Sebastian from Trigger Mesh was talking about you know, eventing, everything about eventing. So there's a lot of confusion about what is eventing, what is FAS, he kind of breaks it down here. And check out this clip, which talks about 
all about eventing. Right, so we're really focused on, you know, what triggers the execution of functions. Yes. Uh, and you know, in that realm, you know, if you're more familiar with Google and uh, and AWS, then it's you know, uh, Event Bridge, it's Google Event Arc, right? And you and you see that what people are trying to do is really to say, hey, I have events in this service, like you know, Kinesis, or I have events in S3, and I want to trigger execution of a function. Right? So that's really what we're doing uh, for people who want to do this on-prem, right? or you know, other events that are not Google or AWS. You know, could be, as I said, you know, WebEx events, or you know, Cisco InterSight events, and, and you want to trigger some type of you know, event flow. Right? That's a wrap for day one at KubeCon. Check out tomorrow where we'll have a lot of new interesting guests, a lot more content, so stay tuned.